You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you've joined me on this cold, cold Monday morning here in South Carolina. When I woke up, it was 32 degrees. You know, when you wake up and you put your feet on the cold wood floor, it's shocking. <laughs> but it wakes you up. It's, I think it's better than a cup of coffee sometimes. But you know, when the dogs got to go, they got to go. And you, you get up at the most unsoundly hours sometimes just to let them out. So tax season is about here and January is coming. You've only got a couple more months to revisit your tax issues. Your tax return that you need to file for 2018. So let's go over some of the things that have changed under the Tax Reform Act, or what they call the, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, the TCJA. Now, this was signed uh, into law by President Trump in December 22, 2017. So this law affects every area of taxation. So you have to be proactive as a taxpayer and make sure that you're ready and that you've are in compliance with with what is going on. The majority of the bill goes into effect um, after December 31st, 2017, which means it affects you for 2018. And then uh, you need to remain in compliance. Compliance, 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 which means that you have to prepare your tax documents early, be proactive and get it all done. Sit down with your tax practitioner now and go over to make sh over the uh, payroll issues to make sure that you filed a new W-4 to take care of the new tax rates that went into effect in 2017. I know many of you have not done that. So you need to do that. And if you are a self-employed person running your own private business, you need to need to look at the tax implications for 2018 also. So <clears throat> Let's go over some of the following, which are the which is going to be like a really quick review of the ten most notable items, which are going to affect individual taxpayers. Each one of these items we're going to talk about will be discussed thoroughly later on, and you need to talk about this with your tax practitioner. Okay, I always tell individuals on my podcast. Sit down with your tax practitioner and make sure that you're being proactive. The key word is proactive. Two words, I mean. Proactive. And and make sure that you're in compliance with the new tax rules as we know them at this moment. Okay? Number one, changes to the tax brackets. There are seven tax brackets with a top rate of 37%. The top rate in 2017 is 39.6%. But for 2017, for 2018, it's now 37%. That's the highest tax bracket. Number two, there was a repeal of the personal exemption deductions and an increase in the standard deduction amounts. And they changed to 24000 for joint filers and surviving spouse, $18,000 for head of household, and $12,000 for unmarried taxpayers and married taxpayers filing separately. Additional amounts for the elderly and blind are retained. Number three, remember we're going over the top ten, okay? Number three, a $10,000 limit on the deduction for state and local taxes, which is used for both property taxes and income taxes, or sales taxes in lieu of income taxes. So make sure that you understand that. There is a $10,000 limit on the deduction for state and local taxes, which is used for both property taxes and income taxes. Number four, 
a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar limit on the loan amount for which a mortgage interest deduction can be claimed by individuals with existing loans grandfathered and the repeal of interest deductions on home equity indebtedness. So if you've got if you're gonna pay points, it's gone. Okay? If it has to do with indebtedness on that property. Number five, a repeal of miscellaneous itemized deduction subject to the 2% of adjusted gross income floor. Number six, a repeal. Let me see. Just one moment. I'm sorry. I had to put you on mute because with it so cold, it's affecting the chest. The chest is congested at times. You know, when it's uh, really cold, it really affects a lot of things. I notice that my hands hurt because of the cold. Oh, my. Shoot, I'm getting old. That's the problem when you get old, right? Okay, let's get back to taxes because that hurts even worse. <laughs> okay, so. Number five was a repeal of miscellaneous itemized deduction subject to the 2% of adjusted gross income floor. Number six, a repeal of the personal deductions for casualty and theft losses, except for losses incurred in presidentially declared disaster areas. Okay, so the president has declared your area disaster area, you can take that deduction. If not, you don't get to take it. So the personal deduction for casualty and theft losses are gone unless... It's been approved by the President of the United States. Now, in California, you can take it against California if the governor has declared it a disaster area. Okay? Number seven, an increase in the child tax credit to $2,000. 1400 is refundable. And an increase in the phase-out threshold amounts of um, to four hundred thousand dollars for joint filers and two hundred thousand dollars for all others. The credit is one thousand dollars under present law and is fully refundable. Number eight, an increase in the alternative minimum tax, or what we call AMT, except exemption amounts and the adjusted gross income threshold at which the exemption amount begins to phase out. Talk to your tax return. If you've got an AMT before, make sure you talk to your tax practitioner about that. Number nine is a repeal of the deduction for alimony paid in corresponding inclusion in income by the recipient. Effective for tax years beginning in 2019, alimony paid under a separation agreement entered into prior to the effective date is generally grandfathered. So again, those of you who are looking at getting separated or that are going through a divorce in 2018, the repeal of the deduction for alimony paid and corresponding inclusion in income by the recipient has been repealed. Talk to your attorney and talk to your tax practitioner before you sign on the dotted line. Number 10. Permanent repeal of the individual shared responsibility payment Individual health care mandate enacted as part of the Affordable Care Act. So you're not going to have to bring in those forms this year and show your tax accountant that you have proof that you are covered. That's gone, okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email at mlodge at lodge-co.com and we can answer some of the questions. If I don't know the answer to the question, I, I guarantee you I'll find the answer. So if you have any questions regarding the new tax rules that affect you, don't hesitate to send me an email and I'll answer them. But I want to stress one other thing. If you haven't sat down and readjusted your W-4 for 2018, you may owe more or you may have taken out too much. 
depends on your tax situation, but you need to sit down with your payroll department. And, you be, and before that, you need to sit down with your tax practitioner and see whether or not if you are in compliance. You need to file a W-4 or you may need to make adjustments at the end of – in the next two weeks, I mean, the next two months because you don't have much time to make any adjustments. You can't make it after 2018 is done with. You have to do it within 2018. If you need to uh, get a, an IRA or whatever you need to do to help you, you need to do it now. Don't wait until 2019 when you go to your tax practitioner and all of a sudden you didn't take care of a situation in 2018. And now in 2019, it's affecting your tax return. So tax rates change, the tax laws change, and it's going to affect your tax return. So sit down with your tax practitioner and take care of these issues prior to the end of 2018. Get it done. Be proactive. Be smart about your tax situation. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, because it wasn't brought up hardly at all within the passage of the Tax Reform Act, economic zones. We now have economic zones within various communities that are trying to drive jobs into oppressed areas. They might be in city cores. They might be out in the country. I'm not quite sure where the tax zones are because uh, I haven't uh, pulled up the uh, language that the Treasury Department has put out. But they're there and they're available for you to use. So if you're thinking about, if you don't want to do business in Los Angeles anymore, let's say, or California anymore, Look at the states who have the economic zones in them and put your business in those zones. Take advantage of the tax provisions designed for you. You know, I get so, well, I'll just say, I get really pissed off at people. I had a conversation last week with an individual, and he was saying, I don't think it's right that these real estate companies are taking so much depreciation and getting such a tax break. My friend... That's what the tax law was written. If you have a tax law to take advantage of, you take advantage of it. If it applies to your business, do it. If it applies to your personal side, do it. Don't think that all of these rich people are doing it. Get that out of your mind because that's nonsense. The tax laws are there for everybody. If you have a rental property, you take a depreciation against it. Now, the depreciation laws have changed for 2018 but there's available, there are tax codes available for you to use. Don't play this old poor me thing and not take advantage of the tax code. The law is there for you. If you've got the support to use it, do it. So if you have a, a tax advantage for you of operating a new business or a startup or any kind of business that you want to relocate, Put it in an economic zone. I've seen these economic zones work very well. Good example, Philippines. I know Philippines because I've done business in the Philippines for so many years. They created an economic zone out in Subic. Now, Subic used to be the military base and the naval base, and it provided thousands of jobs to Filipinos there. When the military went, left Philippines, it left a lot of people without jobs. So the Philippine government designed this economic zone out of Subic. And a lot of companies moved in. Manufacturing companies, shipping companies. Because they had these tax advantages in these economic zones. It did very, very well. If you go to Subic today, it's very Americanized. You can go down the street and it's very Americanized because it was taken care of. And the economic zone made it an enticing place to do business. Well, in the United States, we now have economic zones. If you want to know more about it, contact Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina. He was one of the writers of this bill, and he can help you on that. Or even contact your local senator and say, hey, can I get more information on the economic zone? Or even go to the Treasury Department. They have it there also. But take advantage of it. I mean, if it's available for you to use, use it. So that is our Tax Talk Monday.
If you again, if you have any questions, send me an email at mlodge at lodge-co.com and I will try and help you out as much as possible. Again, if I don't know the answer, I will get you the answer. I promise you on that. Everybody go out. Have a great day. You have a lot to get done before the end of the year. Be proactive and really sit down and think about your tax return for 2018. You've got two months to make any type of adjustment that needs to be made. This is Mike Lodge for the WBT. I will talk with you very, very soon. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. World of Business and Taxes on WBT. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services.